He's got the ball in hand from Nashville for the SEC tournament crown. Here we go. We will see man-to-man -man defense from Ole Miss. We will see zone out of Ole Miss. They could not beat Florida when they were fresh, and they beat Florida when they're tired. Three and three days. Murphy with a hook shot on the baseline. Uh, they started the last two days. That's what I love about Florida right now. They're getting away from the three-point shot and establishing themselves on the box, which you must do in March. Murphy against LSU set a career high with 27. Anderson's first three rims out. Scotty Wilbekin assigned to check Marshall Henderson to start this game. Wilbekin will get his shots at him. Casey Prather and Kenny Boynt will be the three guys to check Henderson. Patrick Young, baseline with a left hand. Right block for Murphy, left block for Patrick Young. Billy Donovan has his guys dialed in and playing a very good neutral style floor offensively. Here's Rosario with a steal, but he stepped on the sideline and route to the basket. Well, Patrick Young is really developed as a patient guy on the low block and a powerful guy with a finesse finish, Brad. This kid is a rock. He's a stud. And for a powerful built kid with those kind of shoulders to have a finesse finish, hard to find. Anderson running the baseline. Wilbekin right in his grill defensively. And notice Wilbekin won't let him run to his left shoulder to start this game. Buckner missed with his hook shot. Double screen action up top. One dive and one pops. Kenny Boynton. The kick out to Murphy. Mismatch there, height-wise, in a big-time way, but they don't take advantage of it. And they throw it away. Millinghouse, pull-up jumper. Got it for two. And he brought the house down a couple of nights ago when he had to late. And extra points or points other than Marshall Henderson or a must for Ole Miss in this game. Millinghouse was a star in the win over Missouri. A dramatic fashion as you saw in our opening. Rosario on a runner. Nice shot. The kid can now make tough twos, Brad. A volume shooter throughout his career at Rutgers and last year at Florida. Lived at the three-point line. Now the toughness and tenacity to make tough ones. Let's see what Buckner does against Patrick Young. Two big bodies. A walk. Start this ball game, Scotty Wilbekin chasing Marshall Henderson. And now watch, not letting him run to his left shoulder, forcing him to run out to the other side to his right shoulder. The scouting reports, all the numbers say Marshall Henderson about twice as good when he runs to his left into a shot. Wilbekin right on top of it. Trying to get it to Patrick Young. Gorton's got to bring it back on top to Wilbekin. Ten on the shot clock. Boynton for three. And Young trying to save it. He saved it, but he threw it right to Millinghouse. A little guy dribbling through traffic. Henderson on the handoff. Another one halfway down and comes back out. He won't stop shooting. Don't worry about that. Rosario set up for a three and got it. That's what you have to do against Ole Miss. I think the floor is tilted when I watch Ole Miss play at times. They run harder to offense than they do to defense. Florida has sniffed it out early, very aggressive with their push. Here's Millinghouse for a triple. And Murphy, an easy rebound. Millinghouse needs to cool off a little bit. He's got two grown men inside, and Marshall Henderson on the wings. And a whistle and a foul underneath as Young was battling with Nick Williams, and Williams picks up the personal. Brad, Florida can really stress you in transition. Look at Rosario over here on the left side. How do they stress you? Shooters on the wings and rim runs by Patrick Young down the middle, and Wolbekin is very good at reading the yield part of the floor. A lot of stress on your conversion defense. Anderson trying to get the steal and almost did for Rosario. He did tip it, and that's why it wasn't a backcourt violation. of the 2-3 zone. They find a slot in there, and you get. Doesn't connect. And now the loose ball picked up. I will miss. White 
on a runner off the window. And now Wilbur can bring it the other way at full speed, and he'll take it. Well, there he is, White had to battle you get for that rebound. Andy Kennedy can't wait for this TV timeout, but he's hoping they're going to get some points before the whistle. Buckner cross courts it. And that one finally drops for Holloway. Got a very good job by Buckner to read the back trap of Florida. They came with a guard and he read it well. Talk about wow. not having any conscience. Michael Frazier knocks down a three. And things are getting worse for Ole Miss. Rolling about eight. One of the better transition teams in the NCAA tournament will be Florida. They are lethal with big wing shooters in Frazier, Rosario, and Boynton. Murphy, the shot won't go, and Rosario pulls it off the backside. A different look at doubling up Buckner that time. They came with a late monster at him, trying to make sure he doesn't get in the rhythm where the help's going to come from. Rosario pulls up from the elbow, had it blocked by Holloway, and now battles for the loose ball. And it's going to be Ole Miss ball after this timeout. And they are happy to have this timeout to talk things over. Florida early by eight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball on ABC. Brought to you by Dick. 12 4 here, Florida. 14 32 to go in the first half. The path for Florida. They beat LSU easily. Eric Murphy, career high of 27 and 13. And then beat Alabama by 10 and came from 10 down, which is the biggest deficit they've come back to win a game from. Ole Miss, they beat Missouri, dramatic fashion by two. Marshall Henderson had 20 of his 27 in the second half and then beat Vandy, and he had 23 more and seven threes. The regular season back at the Odom, February 2nd. Here's that look, 78-64. Henderson was good, but there wasn't another uh, player to help him out enough. Eric Murphy led the way, and Florida had 23 assists in that game. That's remarkable. Got another reason why we're going to see Ole Miss, I think, with a lot of zone in this ballgame. They're a man down. Jarvis Summers, starting point guard, out again today with concussion-like symptoms. Andy Kennedy knows he has to conserve the legs that he can put on the floor. Wilbur took that long three that didn't pay off, but they keep it alive with the offensive rebound. The first offensive rebound in this game, by the way, by either club. Throwing men on the inside, getting the ball off the board. The feeds. You get, you get, got it to Young. Big man to big man, but they both missed in close. And it's still going to be Florida ball. There's Jarvis, the sophomore out of Jackson, Mississippi. Well, Brad, you're missing a kid that can really defend his spot. He's a big point guard at 6'4", 185. They also will miss his ability to run their smash action. Andy Kenny would invert his offense and run this kid to the, to the block and make your point guard defend him on that low block. Murphy, three-pointers too strong, and again, Rosario tracks down the long carom. Gators plus eight on the glass right now. 11 rebounds already. They're giving themselves second chances and fresh shot clocks. Boy, shooters at all four spots on the perimeter. All four spots. You better shave. Boynton lost his footing. Frazier tracks down the ball in the backcourt. Ole Miss right now is wasting opportunities. They force some turnovers, and then they turn it over themselves on the other end of the court. Frazier, got it. He may be the next big-time star guard for Billy Donovan, Brad. Tough enough to get you two or three defensive rebounds. Shooting right at 50% from three over the last few weeks. He's got two threes already here. And a double-digit lead and another Ole Miss turnover. And how much zone can Andy Kennedy gamble to play in this game? Because this club, again, they can light you up at all four positions on the perimeter. They can do something we didn't see a lot of in January and February. Anderson checks back in as you get Scott, the second free throw upcoming. Normally not a great free throw shooter. Those two were perfect. Now Billy Donovan goes for a gamble because Henderson's back on the floor. And Florida doesn't back away from their pressure. Well, the pressure made him take a timeout, though. 9.31 remaining in the half. 
Andy Kennedy shaking his head. His team not playing as well as Florida. Down 10. Coming up Tuesday, the stars will fall when 10 celebrities, including Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, take to the high dive in a competition series unlike any other. Splash coming up Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on ABC. That'll be some deep water. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is going off the high dive. Yeah, Louis Anderson's wow. coming off, too. That could cause a serious <laughs> splash. Again, Wilbekin forcing him to go out to that side. He's not comfortable. Melly has got a three. Big shot there. On a feed from Henderson. You know, Henderson did damage yesterday, Brad, with you know, four or five key passes. You cannot overextend on him with help. He'll make you pay delivering that ball. Lob down low. Prater draws a triple team and throw it away. Millinghouse trying to beat Wilbekin to the rack. He did, but he missed the shot. Stick back is good, though. And Ole Miss making a little push here. Back to five. And the Rebel faithful getting into it here at Bridgestone. Squad on the floor right now for Florida can't hold up to the size of Ole Miss. Murphy and Young getting ready to check in for Florida. Wilberkin, turnaround jumper, his first basket. Anderson three. That one's way off the mark. Rosario thought about a triple. Instead, he's going to drive. Ooh, big collision. And an offensive foul. The first ball screen was set by Florida within the first four or five seconds of their possession. That's how of a, much of a quick flow offensive team they are. The Rosario has to understand the ball never got to the second side of the floor off of their quick flow offense. Defense set and waiting on him. Mike's going to feel the effects of that one sometime tomorrow. Played it right on his elbow. If Henderson could get loose for one more shot before this next TV timeout, this place is going to come unglued. Wrap around pass. It hit Young. And the Gators come the other way. Frazier missed. But Ole Miss is standing on the baseline. So the break has come at 7.36. Remaining Florida in front. Billy Donovan will talk with Shannon when we come back. Florida with a seven-point lead with 7.36 remaining in the half. And Shannon talked to Billy Donovan during the break. Coach, you said yesterday's game, you felt like your team came out a little flat. Not the case today. What's been the biggest difference? Well, I didn't think our guys came out necessarily flat. I thought we struggled to make some easy baskets. We just missed an easy one there on the break. I think sometimes those plays have gotten deflating for our team. we got to be a little bit more resilient and persevere you know, through those kind of plays. But, listen, it's a long game right now. There's a lot of time left, so he's got to keep playing. Yeah, Ole Miss has proven that they can come alive in the second half. So what are you going to tell your players the challenges you may have to face? Well, I think, like anything else, it's going to be a 40-minute game. And I think it's a 40-minute game for both teams. But certainly they're more than capable you know, Henderson's had some fairly decent looks that haven't gone down. We probably have dodged some bullets, but we're not going to be able to dodge all those for 40 minutes. Coach. Kevin Stalling said almost the same thing to Shannon yesterday about this guy. Some easy, relatively easy looks that haven't dropped, and you can't dodge those bullets all day. Yep, two different guys, Wilbekin and Rosario, have checked this kid so far. Brad, what he can do to you for 40 minutes is run the legs off of you. He has tremendous endurance as a baseline runner. He can catch, shoot, fire ability is awfully quick, can snap it off up top as quick as anyone in the college game, and Billy Donovan knows it. Young brings it back outside the point, and they work it around that perimeter, trying to find an open look. Joe Lenardi's bracketology has Ole Miss as a team that's the last four group of being in. Tennessee out. You disagree with that, I think, partner. But Horton hits a three while I'm asking you. I, I disagree with the Tennessee being the first four out. There, there's no way. When you compare Tennessee's non-conference strength of schedule of 46, wins over Wichita, 30-point beat down of Kentucky, Florida, Missouri, four top 50 wins, nine top 100 wins. Tennessee should be in that NCAA tournament 
ahead of four or five teams that are being projected, and I think it's going to happen. Murphy back out there with a rebound. Rosario, that's his spot, but instead he takes a runner in the lane and missed it. Let's see who's got Henderson. Boynton does right now. Holloway on a drive over Murphy. The shot off the window. Brad, he goes left and lefter. <laughs> and the guy guarding him has got to take away the left hand and rely on the help to come from the right side. Make Murphy Holloway spin back into the help. Florida didn't do it. Two points. One of my favorite one of yours for the year. Left and lefter. That's who he is. That's who he's always been. That's who he's going to be. Murphy trying to go left and got fouled by Buckner. And here's what I'm talking about. They go to their, their twist action up top. Hold it right here, guys. Boom. When he drives left, you have got to get on his left shoulder and make the help come from the right side. And they're not here. Murphy's first free throw. Three points for him on the day. Frazier and Rosario are not wasting any opportunity to go over and have a word with their coach. From what I've seen of Billy Donovan's guys the last two or three games, Eric Murphy is going to become the go-to guy for Florida in the NCAA tournament. Said it yesterday, Kenny Kaji from Miami, Ryan Kelly from Duke, and Doug McDermott from Creighton, and this kid are the four most lethal four men in the game. Holloway, left. Nope, he's going right. How about that? That is bonus. That's something <laughs> that you see him do maybe once every four or five games. Directed traffic. Now going to work. On a pick and roll from Rosario. He's going to take it over Henderson. Got it. Boy, terrific offense. A couple of ball screens, then into their weave action. And they did it on the fly. Very well read and communicated from the bench. For an older team, you can do a lot of different stuff with them. Henderson walked with it. Trying to get a quick step to maybe get a shot away and travel. Well, it seems impossible that 30 years ago, Jim Valvano led North Carolina State to that nine-game run and a championship, the upset of Phi Slamma Jamma, survive in advance. It's coming up tonight at 9 on ESPN, the latest from ESPN's critically acclaimed 30 for 30 series presented by Buick. If it's anything like all the other ones, it'll be sensational. I I'm, not sure there's one of the, I'm not sure there's a better story in college basketball than that one over the years. But that has to be right up there at the top, does yep, it not? It sure does. I'm just not crazy about the idea that 30 years have passed since then. <laughs> and there's a turnover as well. Scotty Wilbur can call it. That is a great job by Murphy Holloway as the four guy to take on the switch action, get his rear end down, and stay ball level with a drive. No panic by Ole Miss of switching Holloway out on a guard. I don't know how much they want to get him a touch somehow. But right now, they're working with the big guys inside and Buckner off the mark. Now, it is hard to pound away at the chest of Patrick Young. You pound away once. If it's not there, you better pass that basketball and move on to something else. And a timeout taken by Florida. 4.15 remaining in the half for the Gators lead by 11. Gators by 11. I talked about you pound away at Patrick Young's chest. Boom, there's one hard bump. Boom, there's another one. Now give the basketball up. Patrick Young has thrown up a wall that's not going to go away. He's going to force you into a fadeaway shot from a post guy that is always going to come up short. You go into Patrick Young's chest one time. If he doesn't give, get the ball out of there and reverse it. That chest doesn't give much. Nah, not at all. <laughs> that dude's chiseled. <laughs> 
10 on the shot clock. Wilbergen thought about a three. Instead, he got it down on the baseline. They work it around to Murphy, and now they're going to have to shoot. At the buzzer, and it goes. And the lead swells the 13 biggest of the ball game. Florida continues to make dirty baskets in this game. They weren't wired to do that during regular season conference play. There's the left hand working again. Holloway with eight leads the way for the Rebels. You cannot get on his right shoulder, Brad, too much. Nice bounce pass to Rosario in some traffic and lost it twice trying to go up. His elbows flying everywhere in there. Brad Rosario didn't cut the score and he didn't catch the ball to score. I mean, being soft in this game isn't going to work. Out of the way, offensive foul, even though the basket went in, Young held his ground. So Holloway picks up the personal. The Rebels are down 11, 3-0-4 remaining in the half. Shannon will talk with Andy Kennedy when we come back. All right, John, see you guys in three minutes. 33-22. Ole Miss in an 11-point hole, and uh, Coach Kennedy talked to Shannon. Coach, yesterday you were able to exploit Vanderbilt's tired legs. What area of Florida's game do you think you might be able to exploit today? Well, the way they're playing, they're really moving the ball. They're an excellent passing team, and they're making open shots. And I think we've getting, we're getting decent looks at the basket. We've got to settle down and make some shots. Typically, that comes to us later in the game. I know you like to watch to see how teams are going to play Henderson and then adjust. So how will you adjust as this game moves forward? I think our timing is really bad offensively. We're not timing our screens efficiently. There's been some slip opportunities. They're really extending on the down screen. We've got to make sure we take advantage of that. Thanks, Coach. Timing of the screen is very important when you got a guy like this that's trying to get free for shots. Well, Andy Kennedy is dialed in right now in, on, in what, what could be there. What's the action that could be there depending on how they're guarding Marshall Henderson? Florida may be extending about a half step too long, and so the, the slip opportunity is there. Henderson can be a passer, or the guy that's trying to pass to Henderson has to read it as well. And it's a steal. Henderson will run that baseline at the speed of light. He got free from Wilbekin for a second. But the shot's off the mark. Well, that's the best look he's going to get probably all day. I see Brett what he did. He was running to his right shoulder. He caught it. What did he do? He wasn't comfortable. He wasn't locked and loaded because of his footwork. It's not nearly as good going that way as is the other way. So he had to gather himself and dribble into a long two. Still in the backcourt. Florida's going to have to hustle. And they lost it again. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Holloway will flush this one. Back to single digits for the Rebels. Kenny Boynton's got a path to the hole and got it. Kenny Boynton said, enough of this turning the thing over. He just said, I'm going to go get us one. His will to win yesterday was terrific. What you expect out of an upperclassman in March. If you didn't see yesterday, Kenny Boynton scored 16 points in a six-minute stretch of the second half in the win over Alabama. Holloway. Here comes the left hand. Air ball, though, to Frazier. Boynton, heat check for Kenny. Got it. Brad, you could hear when you, I, I picked it up on the microphone. As soon as Florida got the rebound, you heard a couple of Gators saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. They know the importance of making Ole Miss run to defense. Just when Ole Miss had cut it down, Florida gathers its biggest lead now, up 14 with a minute 20 to go in the half. White misses the three, kept alive by Holloway. Henderson's got two guys on him. And he'll bring it back on top. Holloway the wraparound pass, and Buckner got mugged by Will You Get. Florida's perimeter defense is winning the battle of guards. Their inside guys now are going to be tested. There's Henderson. A lot of contact on the arm. It's not going to be called with a play like that. 
He didn't get ball. He got he got on. And Scotty Wilberton looked at the bench, and Billy Donovan looked back at him and said, "Play through it." Ole Miss yesterday left some points out there from the free throw line, and this is their first trip there today, and it's unsuccessful for Buckner. Yeah, they were brutal yesterday. Yeah. Buckner and Holloway are the two guys. They have to make their first couple of free throws or they can go 0 for 7 right in a ball game. That's the, the track that Buckner has started on. Buckner started 0 for 4 yesterday. He's 0 for 2 today. Florida's going to have a big time lead heading to the locker room. Just how big is it going to be? Kenny Boynton. And Buckner goes up for the rebound. About a four second difference on the shot clock and the game clock. A bad shot by Boynton. Late in, the, late in the half. Jumped up on the first side of the floor after one pass. Billy Donovan didn't like it. Anderson's camped out on the left baseline. Not moving right now. Holloway in some dribbling trouble, and he turned it over. Oh. They gave it right back, and now Henderson's going to light one up from long range and missed it. Holloway will clean up underneath. And another chance from half court. Taking six from the right side. They've attempted eight from the left side. That's balanced. Florida makes you cover the entire half court. The Rebels on the cusp of the NCAA tournament. If they can come from behind and win, they erase all doubt and become an immediate member of the dance by virtue of winning this title. But right now, Florida's trying to take the regular season and the tourney crown to boot. Brad, you got to make that if you're Buckner. You have to make that. It's a it's a set call play. Knowing that Marshall Henderson is going to attract two, you're going to rim run, and you have to be strong enough, tough enough, determined enough to make that and get an and one. And. Like yesterday, when he couldn't hit from the free throw line, he starts the second half the same way. So look at the missed opportunity for Ole Miss to start this second half. Instead of three points, they may come away with nothing. Got one. Maybe that'll help him down the line a little bit. He did have a better second half shoot the free throws yesterday than the first half. Rosario around a Murphy pick. Boynton mismatch there. Eight on the shot clock. Ducked under the defender. Gets it right back, and now he's going to have to shoot. Good defense by Ole Miss, Brad. They, they, they took away everything. Florida ran about three or four ball screen actions. Ole Miss sniffed it out. White on the drive. Extra pass underneath. Been a good move by Holloway. He's got 14. They're using Marshall Henderson almost as a decoy to start the second half. That time they hard cut him away from the action. Opened up a drive alley. Rosario on a runner in the lane. Rebound off to White. Somebody got shaken up on the play. It was Nick Williams. Might have taken a low blow or something. I'm not sure. But he's in some pain right now. Here he is on the other end, though, taking a shot. Again, Ole Miss won't panic. Holloway's checking the point guard. Needs a power forward. Murphy works the lane, had it stripped. Florida turns it over, and Henderson brings it out. He might take it all the way. He will. Tipped in. Got some help. For Murphy Holloway is having a great game. 16 points. Leads down to seven. Ole Miss playing with the urgency and the desperation that they had to come out with in the first two or three minutes. Remember, Andy told Shannon, sometimes we're better in the second half. We're kind of late starters. They're starting now. And foul out Henderson as we check in with Shannon. 
Well, Brad, for both Florida and for Ole Miss, this is the place in yesterday's game where it really had an impact on the game, the locker room during halftime. Kenny Boyton, of course, came out and scored all of his points in the second half. And for Marshall Henderson, he just lit it up in the second half. Now, Andy Kennedy told me inside that locker room during halftime, it was very calm despite the deficit to start the second half. He said they focused on three things each game, energy, toughness, and focus. The focus was lost specifically with Marshall Henderson. That will be their key for the second half. They got some nice leadership to help them in that focus category with Boynton, Rosario, and Murphy all being seniors. They've been there, done that. Boy, this guy is keeping Ole Miss alive by himself. Brad, that's the second shot he's made driving to the right. You can go back and watch the last five game films. <laughs> he won't even take a shot going that direction. Mismatch inside with Henderson on Murphy. Yep, Murphy got the catch and was rejected out of there. Gators wanted the goaltending call, didn't get it. Pull and pop from three, and he got it. And Billy Donovan not happy with the officiating, not happy with his team, and now it's Landshark time. The lead's been cut to five. I mean, the college game partner have the confidence to bring it in transition when you have numbers. It all started with a block shot that Billy Donovan thought was goaltending. And Marshall Henderson on the push, the ability to rise and snap it off. Rebels, hot to start the half. Tied the ACC as well, guys. All right, John, let's take a look at our game track brought to you by Direct TV. Things warming up. For the Rebels when they needed it. Up to 46% from the floor now. Florida still getting the job done from their bench. But that bench timeout was called with some authority by Billy Donovan. He was not happy with the officiating or his team. And the lead that was in the first half, 14, is down to five. Well, Marshall Henderson, like all great shooters, he knows exactly what he's looking for. And he looks at the back of the rim. I talked to him before the ball game. He said, on the back of the rim, target eyes got. That three is what caused the timeout. And now we got a quick foul. That's going to be on Williams. And Brett, I asked Marshall Henderson, why do you look at the back of the room? I just wanted to pick his brain a little bit. He said, I don't want my shots to be short. If I miss, I want them to be long and give us a chance for offensive boards. He understands the fine points of shooting. Wilbekin missed on the outside. Young will keep it alive for Florida. Murphy trying to get it to Boynton, threw it right to Henderson, and he'll take a three. And now Rosario's ahead of the game. Well, that's all, on, that's all on Nick Williams and Snoop White because Henderson out in front of the pack, and those two guys have to read the numbers. They got sucked into the action. Gives up two because of it. That could have been a five-point swing. Yeah, Henderson absolutely. hit the three. He'll try another one, and this one's blocked. And... A foul. So he'll get three attempts from the free throw line when we come back. 15-42 remaining in the ball game. Florida still in control. Andy Kennedy's Rebels still in the hunt as the lead is at seven for Florida, but it was a lot worse earlier in the ball game. 15-42 still left to play for the SEC Tournament champion to be crowned here in Nashville. Well, Andy Kennedy has a guy that there's no way, partner, he's going to leave this building without getting his shots up. What makes Marshall Henderson hard to guard? Violent cuts for 40 minutes. You're not going to get into his legs. Tremendously disciplined athlete with toughness. A red-hot release. We're going to put a clock on him at some point in this second half. How quickly, in and out of his hands, and the left turns into shots is when he is lethal. That and in the transition push. Pretty lethal from the free throw line as well. 88% on the year. So this will be three free ones for him on that foul by Wilbekin. Right, he doesn't mess around with the ball with the free throw strike. And a lot of guys will. I mean, he keeps it really pretty simple. He gets it. He routines it. Three bounces. And he shoots it. He gets it all done in about five seconds. 
I've seen too many guys that miss free throws taking eight or nine. Right. Too many thoughts come in. Get it. Routine it. Shoot it. Four point ball game. Boynton. Missed the three. Rebels with a rebound. The pack inside. Nice pass. Holloway to Buckner. as they pack it into Patrick Young. I talked about Marshall Henderson being used as a decoy. Brad, look right here. He's going to set the screen. And you're not going to help off of him. If it is, it's a size mismatch. Andy Kennedy has done a nice job this second half cutting him off the action as a decoy, using him as a screener. Marshall Henderson affecting this game more than just a shooter. Murphy, a triple. Misses another defensive rebound by Snoop White. And here's a chance for the Rebels to draw even. And the intensity is picking up in Nashville. White missed a chance. They won't get another chance for the ball. And now Andy Kennedy and Marshall Henderson are having a heated discussion about where he was supposed to be on that play. That's how they show love for one another. <laughs> they do that every day. Every day. I told you before, coaching him is like riding the bull. Yep. Yeah, hang on and hope you can get there at the end. Boynton's wide open over here. They cover him up with the zone. Five on the shot clock. You get nice spin move by Will. You get, but he missed the shot, and Holloway's got the rebound. Henderson. I thought he was going to pull up right there. have never led in this game. The lob underneath. They're tied now. Doing more than shooting shots is Marshall Henderson. Now he's putting some backcourt heat on Kenny Boynton. Rosario, the pump, and the layup off the window. Nice move by Mike Rosario. Florida's handled that press. They turned it over the first couple of times, but since then, very aggressive up the sideline and to the rim. comes Henderson around the screen. A double team to know, got on him in a hurry. Again, the easy one for Buckner on a nice speed. Brad, to me, uh, oh, Ole Miss is driving right at the legs of Florida. Florida with the tired legs to start the second half instead of the Rebels. Occupy this zone with eye action, Brad. You can't stare things down. Occupy the movement with your eyes. Boynton found a little avenue. This is the layup, but he'll go to the free throw line. And Kenny says, give me a second before you pick me up, fellas. He hit the deck pretty hard. Henderson playing a winning brand of basketball right now. Staying very disciplined, not forcing shots. You know this kid is wired and he's hungry to get shots up, but he's taking what the defense has given him. A well-designed play that is starting to become more and more popular in college ball. Throw it to the opposite side of the rim, and this is what we're looking at with Boynton. And he is not up yet. That's where he said, give me a second, and he's taking a lot more than a second. I think everything hurts. Duke Werner out there, the trainer. Uh, he's up and I guess he's all right. And he just shook his head to Coach Donovan and said, yeah, I'm okay. Tough dude. It's been a mm. tough game. There's been some hard landings on both ends. Absolutely. You know, Florida was hot defensively in the first half. They are not hot right now. 
They are reacting instead of guarding, and there's a major difference. Well, the officials having a little dance out there among themselves. Dancing with the Stars is starting on Monday. Premier event Monday at 8, 7 Central on ABC. I'm not sure if there's been an official timeout call or what exactly here. Maybe Rosario has a little blood issue that they got to get cleaned up. It's like dealing with that right elbow. Boynton, you mean? I mean, Boynton, yeah. And the officials, we understand, are looking for elbows, too. Oh, yeah, I see the offensive elbow to the face of Buckner, basically. Kenny Boynton's right elbow. Brad Boynton is responsible for that elbow now. Driving that ball, will the officials view that as a basketball play? I don't think that's a basketball play. That's a, that's an elbow that that he got up and right at the face of the old Miss defender. So one more conference between Joe Lindsay and Mike Nance and Tony Green. And we had one of these last night with Marshall Henderson trying to get open, and Tony Green and Mike Nance don't agree with it. So now. Joe Lindsay looks at it only two officials at a time can be at the monitor so they're rotating through making sure all three sets of eyes get on this play Tony's got the headset on there's Doug Shaw's our alternate official helping him out as well is this a normal basketball play to me that is not that is a classic example of a flagrant one I think by the offensive player who is responsible for his elbow action and he got it up, boom, right into the chin. Well, that would literally add insult to injury if it's going to be a foul called on Kenny Boynton because he's the one that was on the deck for about two minutes before he could get up. And they're still working on his elbow. He's thinking right now, man, I didn't know Buckner's chin was that hard. <laughs> yeah. It hurt my elbow. Brad, the secondary defender, even if he's in the restricted arc, you can't, the elbow action is still true. You still go by the rule of a flagrant one. So now we've got everybody but Shannon out there having a conversation about it. You can see Billy say the word elbow. I think they're about to come to an agreement. And Kenny said, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Again, what's the right? Elbow of Kenny Boynton right there. And this is going to be a, a, how did they view it? Basketball play or not? Okay, this is where Jimmy takes his headset off and Tony tells us what went on. So we can relay it to you. Meanwhile, Will Yagett's going to go to the free throw line. It is for the official Joe Lindsay, the lead official, when the ball's coming at him. And Florida's going to take a timeout. So what was once a 14-point lead in the first half is now a two-point deficit. That's what I'm talking about. It goes off of Murphy Holloway and through the net and out of bounds. And that's, that's the right call. And Mike Nance was standing right behind the pass. He did a good job of making sure he followed the fly of the ball and communicated. Billy Donovan talking to his guys about body language right now. And that's about as fired up as Billy gets. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, Brad, it's interesting because in the locker room, and you just see Billy Donovan getting his guys worked up. Um, in the locker room, Billy Donovan was a lot of X's and O's. It wasn't emotional like it was yesterday. But I listened in on one of his huddles, and it was. He said to his guys, there's no excuses at this point. You got to go out there, and you've got to play. You have to battle and grind. And at that moment, he told them that he just wanted to see more movement out of his guys. He wanted to see them doing their thing. We've known Billy Donovan a long time. I don't know that I've ever seen him that heated. 
Red, what did he question about his club before this tournament began? Their consistent fire. They have not had that fire in the last four or five minutes. They have no more home games. What's your neutral floor swagger and fire going to be? Sometimes you have to generate it. Right now, Florida better get to doing it. He told us, you and I, complacency, arrogance, and overconfidence will get you beat every time. Every and right single. now, he doesn't like the way his team is looking. Absolutely. Henderson, another one drops. The lead is four. On the flip side, his arrogance wins ball games. Rosario thought about taking the three. Now they bring it back on top. Wilbekin threw it away to Millinghouse. And the dish to Buckner. The Rebels are alive in Nashville. And a hard foul on Rosario. They're calling on White. Marshall Henderson told us before the game, one more to play. And then he said, I mean, seven more to play. That'd be a national title. Right now, they're just trying to get in the dance, and he's certainly helping the cause. Surprise, Jimmy. All right, that follows us, John. Thanks. Six-point lead now. Marshall Henderson's got 11 of his 14 in this half. Ready, runs to his left. He catches the basketball. Now he's going to bring it and kind of sweep and square himself back up. So it's going to be naturally slower, but still, it's in and out in one second. Now, when he's running to his left and continues that shot motion in his natural groove, he'll let that thing get out of there in .5 or .6. That's as good and as hot as you can be as a college shooter in terms of in and out of your paws. Rosario going to the free throw line to try to get Florida some offense back in gear because they've only got two field goals in the last five and a half minutes. He's a good guy to have at the strike. 86% free throw shooter. How about the game from Murphy Holloway right now, Brad? He's 9 out of 10 from the floor. 18 points, 6 boards. Setting the rules around the rim of how they're going to play the remaining 11 minutes. Oh, that one popped out by uh, Mike. He got one of two. Rebels by five. One one three zone by Florida. Their first look at it today. Here is Murphy Holloway. Out to Millinghouse for three. Questioned it yesterday, can Florida close out close games? That's where they've struggled all season long, winning a single-digit ball game. This could be one. Wilbekin had it blocked by Buckner. They came from 10 down to beat Alabama yesterday. That was the biggest deficit they've battled their way out of to win. Now they're going to have to come from five down in the next 10 minutes if they're going to win this one. Had two bad shots in a row in last year. Who can go get a basket for Florida? When you take away their offense in tight games, they have not had the ability of the guy just to go get one. Rosario trying to get one. It does. Big three by Mike Rosario. And for the first time in the ballgame, Patrick Young threw a fastball to the other side of the floor. He's been throwing those slow looping passes, and the defense has been recovering to him. Andy Kennedy wants a timeout. I don't think he's too happy with Millinghouse play right now. Still, they've got a two-point lead with 9-17 to play. Let's take a look at our tournament challenge resume brought to you by Allstate. 
If there was any question this morning on Ole Miss, they can put all that doubt aside if they can hang on to the lead with 9.17 to go. Right, if there's a question mark about Ole Miss still, it's because of their non-conference strength of schedule being 281. That, that's too high in the eyes of the selection committee year after year after year. A very few handful have gotten into the last seven years with a non-conference strength of schedule above 250. Ole Miss can eliminate all questions right now. Anderson out of the timeout, long three. Battle for the rebound, won by the Gators. Rosario's got 11 of the 12 Florida points in the second half. And Florida has taken 23-point shots in this game in 22. That's not the balance that Billy Donovan wants. There's a three for Murphy. And Florida goes back in front. Williams, the Rebels back in the lead. Neither team's press has been effective. As a matter of fact, both teams have scored the majority of the time when the press has been set. Rosario had an open three and drove in instead and had it rejected by Buckner, who's had two big blocks in the last three minutes. Henderson on a runner. Got it. Well, a lot of contact for no call to be made right in front of the rim. 16 for Henderson. This is exactly what Florida needs to get ready for the NCAA tournament. Pressure on their guards to figure out how to win a close game. They haven't done it all year. With a tie. In and out. Battle for the rebound won by Nick Williams. Under seven and a half to go. Williams. Three-pointer comes out. Buckner kept it alive to Henderson. Got it! Uh-oh. Don't start chopping yet. There's still some ball to be played. Always on the cusp of crossing over the edge. And Andy Kennedy does a terrific job of monitoring that. Again, how quickly Marshall Henderson in and out. Boom. In, up, snaps it off. Nothing but the bottom. Brad, that's liking, loving, whatever. That's who he is. And if you're Florida, you have to ignore all that mess right now. You don't step into his world. You don't start talking with him. You better start gardening. I told you, he's a second-half player, or has been the last two days. He's showing it again. He only had three points at halftime. And now he's got 19. Let's check in with Shannon. Hey, Brad, Jimmy, you might wonder why he's better in the second half. Well, Andy Kennedy has a theory, and he told me it. He said, in the first half, their offense is on the other side of the court. He can't talk to Marshall Henderson. He says he has to talk to him, calm him down, keep him focused. And when they play offense on this side, he can stay in his ear constantly. And Jimmy, like you said, he can just control that bowl. The bowl was going to Gator chop. Go into that timeout. Let's see if that comes back to bite him in the bull side, backside. Reckon Florida drive the ball and throw the ball to the box. This is the part of the game right now that you'd like to do it. Do they have that ability? Ten on the shot clock. Wilberton got an open look. And up and over the backboard. That might be the missing piece to Florida's puzzle offensively. On the box, are they strong enough in a tight ball game? We shall see. 641 away from an SEC tournament title for the Rebels. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball on ABC. Brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Bridgestone Arena, where the Rebels are in front now. Let's get Jimmy's jet in here. Well, those first-class seats up there for the one seed, Louisville, Gonzaga, Indiana, 
Kansas. You know, Miami can slide up there back to the plains where the action is. Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State, I think they're in along with the South. There's one seat left, and this is where Ole Miss is trying to do. Go <laughs> right there. And with a non-conference strength of schedule of 281, they win this game, it's an automatic. I think they are passing the eye test right now if it hasn't already been decided by the selection committee. They look like an NCAA tournament team. They're going blow for blow with the Florida Gators who all season long have been a top 10 offensive and efficiency team. Ole Miss right now, I would slide them up to that last seat regardless of what happens the last 637. They look like an NCAA tournament team. They passed my eye test. Anderson, one addition, thought it was too good a pass for Buckner. And last touch, I guess, by Murphy, though. Unless we have one official overrule another here. And that's what happened. Billy Donovan has to think about his zone defense right now because Marshall Henderson has scored two straight times against that Florida zone. Costly turnover gives the Gators an opportunity here. Murphy spinning the kick out, the pass. Now Boynton on a runner. Got it. That was the right pass by Frazier and the right play by Boynton. Didn't settle for a tough contested three as a 30% three-point shooter. Drove the ball into a dirty basket, something that Florida has not done the last six minutes. How many of those do they have left in them? Ole Miss is plus 39 in scoring in the second half of games. This is the third one in this tournament. Andy Kennedy has to guard Marshall Henderson just like yesterday. Because when Henderson has the ball, he's thinking shot. Andy Kennedy has to be good with his play calls right now with 22 in red. Holloway has been sensational today. That one doesn't pop, though, and Murphy's got the rebound. Wilbekin in traffic, way up on the window. The foul, 20 in red. They're out by Williams. It's an easy call. Florida very aggressive now, Brad. It's almost like Billy Donovan has said, I don't want any threes right now until we get late in the clock. Everybody helps coach Marshall Henderson. Kenny Boynton from downtown Nashville. This is a three, and the foul's going to be on Patrick Young. Why do you take that shot if you're Boynton? Well, he was the reason they won yesterday. Definitely. Ole Miss taking their time with a four-point lead. Holloway, he's got 20. He, this is as good as he's been with his right hand, maybe in his career. And again, Williams and Patrick Young get tangled up underneath. With that last Ole Miss possession, well, what are they doing offensively different than Florida? They're getting this thing to the box. Off their horns action, they dive a guy and then throw it back and drive a guy. And... Florida does a good job, Patrick Young, of getting on that left side and forcing the help to come from the right. And Murphy Holloway keeps himself under control. Ole Miss playing more of a power brand of basketball than Florida right now with under five to go. Nick Williams picked up his fourth foul, sends Patrick Young to the free throw line, which is not a bad deal if you're a Rebel fan because Patrick struggles from the strike. Talk that one in, though. He actually said, get in there. <laughs> you can hear him over here. Now, you know what? I think that's a big key for this kid right now is just hanging with it. Mentally hanging with it, not backing away from the line, not being afraid of the free throw strike. Second one comes off on the rebound is Whites. Ole Miss by five, and we're under five. Williams in the paint. Rosario with a rebound. And Mike's pushing it up court in a hurry. This should be Eric Murphy's time right now, Brad. The go-to guy. Here he is. 
That is a oh. bad shot, but Young kept it alive. And why did Eric Murphy not keep his bounce alive and attack the rim? I mean, he took the most difficult shot in college ball, that side 12 footer. You got a mismatch. Now go. That is a very difficult shot to take. He had room to get to the rim and go up with two hands, and he's stepped away from the challenge. Not having the kind of game he had a couple days ago. And he went for 27 and 13 rebounds. Yeah. Body language, Patrick trying everything to get that ball to go in. Don't forget Sunday Showcase on ABC following us. The Knicks and the Clippers coverage starts at 3 Eastern on ABC. As soon as we're done, we'll switch to the NBA. Floor with only 14 fouls. They only had three in the first half. And they're defending without fouling. They're not letting Ole Miss get to that free throw stripe a lot. Boy, a big, big rebound by Frazier. They had to have that one after two missed free throws. Murphy, and again, he airmailed that one to the far side, too. Brett, I think now Florida has more three-point attempts than two-point attempts in this ball club, in this ball game. That has been their recipe to lose games, close games, on the road in SEC play, and it will not work on a neutral floor in March. Billy Donovan knows it. Do his guys know it? 25 twos and 26 threes, as you're talking about. Here's a guy that can hit threes, but he missed that one. He had three in the first half that went. That one didn't. We're under four minutes. Ole Miss by five. And on the other end, Andy Kennedy continues to call action that gets the ball to the blue part of the floor. This is their zipper action. Henderson. Wilbekin all over him now, trapped by Yaget, and Wilbekin and Yaget just steals his ball, and now it's loose again in the backcourt. Everybody hitting the deck. It's like a football game. Wilbekin, pull-up jumper. Got it! A great job by Wilbekin Brad to know where the line was. He towed that line to perfection, straight up, straight down. All that loose ball action, everybody hitting the deck, and Scotty Wilbekin hits a huge, huge three. Wilbekin down on the floor right now. Three minutes and four seconds. The Rebels of Ole Miss led by Holloway and Henderson. They've got a two-point lead with three to go. All right, John, here a two-point game with 3.04 remaining. That end of that last play before the timeout, Reginald Buckner called for the foul. And so Florida's going to be shooting one of one. And it's either going to be Frazier or Murphy at the free throw line. There was a collision down there. The officials had to go to the monitor to see who's going to shoot. It will be Michael Frazier. Nine points all in the first half on three three-pointers for Frazier, who can tie this game up again for the fourth time this half. Doesn't get it done, though. Can't make the free throws, and Billy Donovan, I think, would have set his press. To get this thing sped up a little bit. He doesn't like right now Ole Miss's ability to come down and grind this thing out on his half-court defense. Henderson. Had it stuffed by Yaget. And good job defensively by Yaget. I'm telling you, Henderson's going to get his shots up. And Andy Kennedy's going to have to be very good at guarding Henderson himself at times right now. You get the kid the ball, he's going to go try to make a play. He wants to win. Andy Kennedy knows that about him. Possession arrow in the Gators' favor. So a chance to draw even again. After our coverage on ABC, go to ESPN3.com to watch the exclusive live coverage of the SEC Tournament Trophy Ceremony. That's a Rosario had an opening, didn't take it. And then he had Murphy on a slip, and he missed him as well. Eight to shoot. Wilbekin kicks it out. Boynton. Had it taken away. Now the lead pass to Holloway from Henderson. 
Henderson, the putback. Brad, you can't wear him down. He's going to win the hustle plays to close out this game. Wilbekin missed a three. Rosario came in to try to get the rebound, and he's called for the foul. We're at the top of the show, I talked about Ole Miss has to follow the vibe, the swagger, the edge of Marshall Henderson. And he is going to be there to close out a ball game with plays like that. He's like the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, that, all that was was an effort. Who wanted it more? Who has the bigger heart? Who has the will to win? And no one has a bigger will to win than the stare of this guy right now. Can Florida match what Marshall Henderson is trying to do to him? Yesterday, Andy Kennedy's team won, and for him, his 150th win as the head coach at Ole Miss. This would be a heck of a number 151, wouldn't it? Absolutely. 90 seconds away from it. If I was Ole Miss on that possession, I would have gotten Murphy Holloway around that basket with a basketball. The power guy playing a power game has been very good to Andy Kennedy's guy. Don't go away from it. Miami apparently has just won the ACC Tournament Championship. For those of you watching on ESPN for the Hurricanes, welcome to ABC. Brad Nessler, Jimmy Dyke, Shannon Spake. This is the SEC Tournament Championship in Nashville, Bridgestone Arena. And it looked like it was going to be all Florida. The number one seed, number 13 team in the country. They played great a couple of days ago. They were a 12-point leader at Ole Miss at halftime, and Ole Miss has come storming out in the second half. Absolutely. They clean up the ACC Championship game. I think Miami now would slide up to a one seed and knock Kansas out. That's how I would view it as the ACC uh, you know, tournament championship. Yeah, Florida right now is in a position that they've been in a handful of times this year, Brad. Tight game. Can they close out a tight game? Well, that's on Boynton. That's on Rosario. That's on Wilbuck. And their guards have not done it so far this season. They have to have a game like this under their belt before they step into the NCAA tournament and know that they have the mojo to pull it off. Let's take a look at the untouchable moment of the game brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. That's one of them. And there he's doing the chop. That's Marshall Henderson, the leading scorer in this conference, who's the leading scorer again today. And now can the Rebels hold on and win the SEC tournament title? Wilbekin got a square look and missed it badly. But Murphy's there for the putback. I like where Billy Donovan went with the basketball to Patrick Young. I think Patrick Young gave it up too quick. He was one-on-one -on -one isolated on the post, and he passed it out too quick. A minute to play. Two-point game. That same zipper cut action that they started the second half with. Florida sniffs it out. They're right wearing the same jersey as Marshall Henderson. Henderson the pick and roll the buck near the extra pass to Holloway. And that's goaltending. That's the power basketball I'm talking about out of Ole Miss. Using Marshall Henderson almost as a decoy and a passer right now. Instead of putting the ball in his hands as a shooter. Buckner drives it. He makes Murphy step up. And the big shoulders of Murphy Holloway. Florida has not had an answer for the entire ball game. 36 points in the paint, Jimmy, for Ole Miss. They lead by four. If Ole Miss was not in before this game started, they will be in the NCAA tournament. They have passed the eye test. If they win, it's an automatic done deal. Rosario splits through a double team and scores. Oh, 30 basket by Rosario. Didn't settle for a three. Well done. The game clock and the shot clock are almost exact. Mike Rosario, a volume shooter up to this point in his career, but as a senior, has learned the game. Covered up the basketball, drove it with toughness, lowered his center of gravity, exploded by the hip, and gives life to Florida. Florida had a foul to give. And so here's the full court pressure. Well, they're going to face guard and try to get a a turnover off the inbounds pass. And they almost did. They do. They do. Wilbekin. Two-point game. Timeout. With 22.3 to go. Matt, as soon as they went to that face guard action, you knew the heat level was going to go up on just inboundsing the basketball. And Marshall Henderson now is on that edge, and he can't cross over it. The face guard of Casey Prather, number 24. The pursuit from behind by Casey Prather, number 24. The best press guy that Billy Donovan can put on the floor delivers at a key moment. 
Ole Miss had a chance to close this game out by inbounding the basketball, cover it up, and get to the free throw stripe. And that behind ball action pursuit of Prather gives life into Billy Donovan's huddle. On the other end, Andy Kennedy. And you can see Henderson still thinking that he was fouled on that play. That turned the ball over and gives Florida a chance to tie or win. Brett, tough guys, and I think Marshall Henderson's a tough kid. Tough guys get to the next play right now. They don't get to the next moment 30 seconds from now. They get to the next play now, and Marshall Henderson must do it. His team is reading his body language right now. They've read it all season long. They have followed his vibe. They have followed his lead. Get the eyes back focused on the game and close this thing out is the challenge for Marshall Henderson. He said yesterday, every game I go out with the thought that I'm going to really stay focused. I just have a hard time doing it. It's just the way I am. Well, he's going to have to focus right now in the last 22 seconds to try to help his team to a tournament title. I think Andy Kennedy got in his ear early in that timeout and brought him back into the moment. Boy, the play by Prather, the defensive heat by Billy Donovan, on time and on target. Mike Rosario has been the hot hand for Florida in the second half. He's going to be the man to inbound. That Florida, no timeouts left for what they drew up. They're going to have to get it done right now without another pause. Here's Rosario with 15. Murphy backing in. Hook shot. Off balance. Rebound. Holloway. And he's fouled. Florida did not know coming to Nashville who their closeout go-to guy would be, and they settled on Eric Murphy. They told me that on Wednesday, that Eric Murphy would be the guy we go to. But again, the strongest guy is going to win on the box. And Murphy Holloway kept his feet alive, which kept his chest alive, and stayed right on top of Eric Murphy at a crucial time. Going to the free throw line is Murphy Holloway, and he's only a 54% free throw shooter. And the Gators are praying right now that that holds at this point. First trip to the free throw line today. That he's had a huge game, though. He should step up there with a ton of confidence. Got it. 23 points for Murphy Holloway. Timeout, Andy Kennedy. The lead is three. And Holloway from the get-go, 12 points in the first half, and a lot of power basketball. Brad Murphy Holloway told me earlier this year that he's waited a long time for Ole Miss basketball to be relevant when he's wearing a jersey. He said, now the challenge is to stay hungry. We're relevant. Well, the hungriest dude on the floor has been this guy for 40 minutes. Henderson has matched him in that department as well, but Murphy Holloway has played like a senior that knows this is the only chance I have left wearing that uniform. Holloway's been sensational. 38 career double-doubles, including one today. A three-point lead. The next free throw would be the capper. If they can hold on for 8.6 seconds, but if he misses, Florida with no timeouts. But they would have an opportunity for a three-pointer to send it to overtime. And don't forget the Knicks and the Clippers follow us. The NBA on ABC when we're done. And look what he's done. He's talked about keeping the ball on the side of the floor. It's exactly what he's doing with his guys. Knowing that the ball gets into the middle, you have problems. Keep it a funnel on the side if Florida's bringing this thing up to try to tie it with a three. Murphy Holloway, today's player of the game, brought to you by ING. He has been a man all day long. It did not look like Andy Kennedy was talking foul. He was talking about how to defend if Florida's bringing this thing up with a chance. It's a gut call. What have you practiced? What are you confident with? Holloway missed it. Florida with a rebound and a chance for a three. No timeouts. Scotty Wilbekin. And he's fouled before he got to the three-point line. Well, by Williams. A, 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 very well done. They got the ball on the side. And then Andy Kennedy, who didn't draw it, but he talked to his kids. If they get it off the side, we're going to foul. You can't do it any better than what Ole Miss just did. 
So 4.2 to play. When the ball got to the danger part of the floor, that middle third, Ole Miss came with a contact. Don't forget, NBA Kia countdown. The guys will get you ready for the mix and the Clippers by catching up on all the latest news around the NBA. Kia NBA countdown coming up when we're done. Holloway's been the leading scorer. Henderson, the number two scorer. Not just been a score. No, absolutely. I mean, he, you know what he's going to do as far as knocking down shots, but, you know, he took what the defense gave him, especially in the second half. He was under control. He played on that edge, but I don't think he ever crossed over it, making it Marshall Henderson against four. Very good clean half out of 22. So now Scotty Wilbekin at the free throw line. He'll try to make the first and miss the second. Missed the first. Now oh, you have to have it. You had to have that one. Now you got to hope for a miss and a kick out in a yeah, hurry. Yeah, that's what it is. And the guys up top, Rosario and Boynton, behind Wilbekin, cannot break that plane before the ball hits the rim. The important thing here is going to be the box off. Murphy can get a paw on it. Patrick Young can get a paw on it. Here we go. Now the kick out. There it comes to Boynton at the buzzer. It rimmed out. And the 32-year wait in Oxford for an SEC championship. The wait is over. Henderson has equated to an SEC championship and an NCAA berth for Andy Kennedy. He rode the bull one more time and wasn't thrown off. He kept Marshall Henderson under control. A terrific job by Florida. Look at Boynton. He stays outside until the ball hits the rim. No one. All I'm going to have time for is a tap out, step into a three-point shot. You can't execute it any better than Florida did. The shot just didn't drop. And the celebration now begins in Nashville and back in Oxford. Folks are hugging each other. They don't even know. They might throw a tailgate party in the Grove tonight. Congratulations to the Rebels of Ole Miss. You're the 2013 SEC Tournament Champions. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, if they do have a party in the Grove, Andy Kennedy might be sleeping. He hasn't gotten much sleep during this tournament. You told me, congratulations. How would you describe what this moment right now is like? You know, I'm just so proud of our guys. You know, Shannon, coming in, we had not played great basketball, but we had played extremely hard. We're a grinding team, and our, and, our, and our group finally embraced that. That's not easy to embrace, hard work. Not a lot of people like that. Uh, our group understood what was at stake. It's a, it's a great moment for our program. We've had a lot of frustrating years in basketball at Ole Miss, and I'm so proud for these seniors to be a part of this moment. What was this journey like for you guys? Well, you know, it's been an incredible journey. 34 games into this, well, I think we've grown as a team. I think we've grown closer as a team. Uh, and as a result, we get to enjoy moments like this. Congratulations on the SEC Tournament Champion and the NCAA berth. Congratulations. Hey, thank you, Shannon. I knew we had it all the time, Jimmy. My tie matches her pants. It was over. <laughs> there you go. We're not wearing the chucks today, but we're matching. He's on the jet, Coach. He's on the jet. He's on the jet. Doesn't care where the seat is right now. Congratulations to the Rebels of Ole Miss. They win the SEC Tourney title 66-63. to Don't forget, stay tuned. Key NBA countdown. Bonus coverage of the trophy presentations available on ESPN3. Your 2013 SEC Tournament Champions are the Rebels of Ole Miss. We've enjoyed our time in Nashville. For Shannon Spake, my partner Jimmy Dykes, Brad Nessler, the Rebels are the champs. Goodbye from Nashville.